Hello, everyone. I am Bianca, and this is Tanner, and we are your Common Sense Editors here every Tuesday to walk through a different tool that you can use in your classroom. You can always check us out at commonsense.org slash education. There you go. Um, and Tanner, you have a tool to walk through today. What do you have for us? Yeah, we're going to talk coding today. Uh, we did a review recently of a tool called Pencil Code. Um, let me get the review up there. This was a four-star review for us. Graded this at around two through 12. Um, and most importantly, it is free, completely free. Always has been, seems to always will be. This is a tool that's been around for quite some time. Um, and it is a block-based coding tool, which probably a lot of you are familiar with that. Um, it's kind of in the, let's say, scratch vein, maybe the most familiar of those kinds of coding tools. So you've got your blocks here that you drag and drop to a workspace over here, and then you can tweak the... Um, qualities and parameters of those blocks and then you run the code and then the code does something over here. It's a tried and true system for teaching coding, especially to beginners. Um, but a particularly neat thing about pencil code is that it is it starts you off in the kind of block-based format, but you can click over and just do text-based coding as well. So you have that option if you've got a a classroom with a mixed group of students um, uh, for mixed ability levels. Some want to use the blocks. Some want to use just um, regular text-based code. You can do that. The real drawback for pencil code versus other tools is it's kind of got a DIY vibe in that it is a really functional, neat tool that is free has a lot of different um, projects for inspiration that you can browse and use, um, but it's not as well structured as some of those other programs. So if we look at what they've got for teachers here, you kind of have to sort through all the links to these resources and pick and choose and put together something that'll work best for your purposes. Um, there's not gonna be that kind of login, add your students, send them assignments, they go through a kind of um, automated curriculum for them. It's not, not that. It's more like get the teacher's manual, which is a PDF, read through the teacher's manual, find things that'll work for you, assign those projects to your students and have them work through those projects. Now, those materials are really good though. Uh, but you're going to have to do some some hunting and pecking and putting things together that'll work. Um, but there is this teacher's manual that is pretty great. Um, there's also here this PDF. One of the creators of Pencil Co. put together this um, printable PDF book on Pencil Code that you can look through. And this also has, um, it's kind of got an old school approach. Like when I was learning coding stuff back in the day, you used to um, print out coding projects and use those to kind of, um, you know, write some instructions and then run them and see how it works and then tweak what you get. That's kind of the idea behind this book that the creator put together. You get um, a series of projects um, that are all linked. Um, oh, where, where are they linked? Here they are. This book, that PDF, associates with these pro projects, which you can go take them and then run them and then mess with them um, to kind of learn how the different blocks function. And um, that's one kind of nice thing about pencil code, I think, is that it's it's got it kind of got this. Um, sort of open source ethos where all the projects are available, even from people who are using it and creating. And then you can go through and um, copy those projects and use them yourself if you want. So, um, and 
it's organized a lot around creativity. So you can see here, there are projects that are about um, making shapes and pictures, but then there are projects uh, about making music, which you're not gonna be able to hear, but like this is a song, a queen song programmed in the game. So when you play this, the queen song plays on the keyboard. Um, and then there are also the neat little text-based games. Um, so here's one that's like a, a choose your own adventure kind of text-based thing where you choose your choices and you can see here the instructions and it's easy to just hop in there, add a new section, and then, you know, run the code and debug it to see what you did wrong. And that though is where things may go really awry. So, you know, you can have students um, typing in, modifying, they're gonna get an error message. They have this little debug thing down here. Um, and you can type help to get a little bit of assistance. But it isn't all that helpful. It, uh, at this point, you're going to have students that are going to need some teacher assistant or maybe an expert student in the class to help them. Um, and that's going to be challenging. So there are some things we've talked about that are like, oh, you don't need any experience. Like Ozaria is another tool we're talking about. Yeah, that teachers, was actually my question, Tanner. Is this, do you feel like this is something that a teacher could go into with no experience or is this something that you're going to need to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to, because this problem is going to come up, like a student's going to be like, oh, I'm trying to make this game and fix this and I'm trying to make this next thing and you're gonna, they're going to get this error message and then they're going to be stuck and you're going to need to help with that or you're going to have to have a student in the class who really knows their stuff that can help. Um, so it's kind of tricky in that way. Of course, for motivated students, they're going to be able to figure this out or this can you know, lead to really good collaborative opportunities and that kind of thing, especially because you can um, share your creations and then other students can save them and work on them and that kind of thing. Um, you can log in and save your projects and share them. Um, so students can kind of work on, on helping each other out, but um, that's kind of the big drawback with pencil code is it's a great kind of, um, free starting place with a ton of content, a ton of opportunities, um, focused on real code. This is coffee script, um, which is like JavaScript and, and HTML and CSS, but, um, it's very DIY. It's very open source. This isn't a fully structured experience. Um, but a ton of resources, a long history, a lot of educators really love this, this tool. Um, but for us, it's really in that kind of four star range in that your mileage may vary, but it is, um, a great functional coding tool. So that's pencil code. Awesome. Thanks, Tanner. So you can check us out at commonsense.org education for more tools like this one. Thanks.